thank you so much. I'm very excited to be part of the DLD community. So let's start with the first slide. Okay, so we just heard uh, Bjorn talk about uh, how to generate images using artificial intelligence, right? And by now, I think you're very used to this idea that there are images that are generated by AI, and those are AI-generated images, and then there are what you would call like real images, right? Like, and you probably imagine that if you take an image with your smartphone or if you go to a hospital, that image is like a real image. So what I'm going to tell you is that the images you see um, in many imaging applications, for example, if you take a picture with your smartphone or if you go to the doctor, those are also images that are generated by AI. However, in this case, the AI makes the images uh, better in the sense that you have a more accurate representation of the underlying truth. Okay, so what makes imaging hard? So let's start with this question. So here's an image. So did anybody see this image before? It's a very famous image. It's an image taken of a street in Paris, like during the day. So now if you look at that image, for a while something sticks out that is kind of odd, right? So one thing that is odd about this image is that there is no person on the street. It's very hard to identify a person on the street, even so it's during the day in Paris and there are no horses either, right? So the reason why you don't see any person there is this picture was taken for uh, three minutes or like three to five minutes, meaning that there are actually a lot of people, but these people are moving and the horses are moving, so they are all washed out. The only person that you can see is this person here who is just standing still because their shoes are getting cleaned, right? So it's considered to be the first photograph of a person. Now this image illustrates what makes imaging difficult because what imaging is about is we are actually collecting measurements of the environment using some physical device. So in this case, if we take a photograph, we are just collecting light for a certain time interval. Now, in order to make a good photograph, you know, you can just improve the physical device, and we have done that, and you can perfectly well create uh, good images, right? Without using computation and without using AI. However, there are imaging technologies that are just impossible without using computation. And one such imaging technology is computed tomography. So the way this works is you go into this machine, the machine collects measurements, and those measurements are kind of stitched together in a very complicated way in order to generate such a 3D representation of your, uh, of your hand in this case, right? So now, um, there was really, or there is really, an era of computational imaging systems. So, and what's very interesting about this era is that this idea of using computation to generate images is very old. It's older than computers itself. For example, 1940s, there, like we didn't have computers at that time, right? So there was a German engineer who invented a system in order to do all these computations in a mechanical way. Didn't work very well, right? So we had to wait till 1970s, till computers were sufficiently fast so you could do computer tomography in a computer. So this is the first CT reconstruction. And we've come a long way, so this is what you get in 2020, you get a very sharp image. So what's happening now is, so again, there was this era of computational imaging systems, and what's happening now is that there is an era of um, neural network-based imaging systems. And the reason why that's happening is now we have much more compute, so we have very powerful GPUs, we also have a lot of data, and the availability of compute and data is right now enabling this new era of neural network-based imaging systems. So I want to give you an example and you know, tell you a little bit about the challenges with these technologies. Um, sorry. So first of all, here, here's just a few examples, just to illustrate that you're already using these technologies. So for example, if you take a, smart, if you take a picture with a smartphone at night, the lens is really tiny, right? So you're not collecting enough light to take a good picture. So how do you get such beautiful pictures at night? Well, 
what happens is you collect a lot of night, and there's a neural network that generates an image out of these measurements that you're taking. So this is really generated by a neural network. Then you have deep learning-based medical imaging. So this is really just starting. So if you go to a hospital today, um, it's actually unlikely that this is going to be used. But in a very modern hospital, you use deep learning in order to um, accelerate the MRI scans, to make the quality better, things like that. So the image that a radiologist see um, can be deep learning generated. And in the future, they will all be generated by neural networks just because it works so much better. This also happens in scientific imaging. So, for example, if you image a protein, if you image the black hole, things like that. So it's having a huge impact in all kinds of imaging systems. So how does this work? So here's an example, accelerated magnetic resonance imaging. So here you have an MRI scanner. The MRI scanner collects measurements. So this is how these measurements look like. Um, those are lines, right? This is data you collect. The black lines, that's data you don't collect. So you're kind of collecting too little data in order to reconstruct your image. So it's a very difficult problem to map from this data to an image. And so the way how neural networks come in is you train a neural network to take as an input this measurement, and the output is the clean image. So you collect a lot of pairs of measurement and image, and it's very difficult to collect but people have figured that out. And then you train a neural network to do this mapping for you. So here you see a performance comparison. So here's a traditional reconstruction algorithm. And here you see what the neural network gives you. So you can see, like here you have a lot of artifacts, it's very blurry, and here you see a super sharp image. And it's actually also not just super sharp, it's also very accurate. So you really get a significant boost in terms of uh, image quality. So one challenge in practice is the following. So the way how this works is we, like let's say we build such a system. Then we maybe go to some university, let's say New York University, and we collect a bunch of data. Then we train our neural network on that data. And if we apply that neural network on the same kind of data, so at the same hospital, under the same conditions, similar time, and so on, then we get really good performance. However, if we apply this, like let's say at TUM, like where you know the patient population might be different, the way how people use these scanners is different, and so on, you get a performance drop. So this is a significant problem in practice, and a lot of the work in, in our lab uh, goes into building robust deep learning models. So there are these ideas of doing test time training in order to improve performance, and then there is, is this idea to just build a very diverse data set. So essentially to build um, a data set such that if you train your method on such a data set, it's a very robust method. OK, so what I want to, to tell you is the, the mismatch of training and test data is often very limiting in imaging, and it's also often very limiting in machine learning more broadly. So for example, if you have a language model, you know, and we, we heard this story from uh, Jonas before, if it doesn't get a riddle right, it might just be because it's not trained on these riddles, right? So if there's a mismatch between what you train your model on and how you use it, then usually you get a significant performance drop. And there's really two ways how to get out of this. You can uh, build significantly better methods by using ideas like test time training, so you essentially train your model on a given instance, or just by building better training sets. All right, so now we are in this era where compute resources and data is enabling a new era of, of information processing systems based on neural networks. And this is really something that is not only happening in imaging, and this is really just at the beginning. So for example, there's lots of challenges left in imaging, for example, building robust models. We talked about this, like reconstructing moving objects, such as this heart and also building inclusive models that work for everyone. Then there are a lot of um, other domains where people are starting to use neural networks where they traditionally use classical algorithms. For example, communications. In communications, you know, all these algorithms that are used in your smartphone are designed by experts, but this is also shifting that now more and more we are tr learning these algorithms and they become neural network based. And the same happens in computational biology. 
All right, thank you very much.